Good afternoon, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This YouTube channel is for Christian women, but anyone is certainly welcome to listen. I want to do a message today about some identifying characteristics of the Antichrist that are not usually brought up when people are discussing the arrival of the Antichrist. So if we go to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3, we read here of this man of sin. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now this phrase, the son of perdition, is used in one other place in scripture, and that is in the book of John, chapter 17, and verse 12. And here Jesus Christ is speaking. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So, of course, Jesus is referring to Judas here. So we can see that there are some things about the Antichrist that are similar to Judas. Now, what can we notice about Judas? Well, he was one of the twelve. He was chosen by Jesus Christ to be a disciple. So this tells us that the Antichrist will be counted among God's people. And another thing that we can see about the man of sin, the son of perdition, is that he was a traitor, that he betrayed Jesus. So we can read a little bit more about this in the book of Matthew, chapter 26. And I'm not going to read all of this here, but I do recommend that people go back and read it after watching this video. So there is a story told here, starting in verse 6, about Jesus eating a meal at the house of Simon the leper, and a woman, being Mary Magdalene, coming to him with an alabaster box full of precious ointment. And she broke open the box and anointed our Lord Jesus Christ with the precious ointment that was in it. And the disciples looked at this as a waste of money. And they also um, reproved Jesus, saying that if, if he was really of God, uh, he would know what manner of woman she was. And this story is told in each of the four Gospels, and I really recommend that people study this a little bit because the even men of God sometimes can can fall into judging people based on the outward appearance rather than what's in their hearts and of course the disciples at this time had not received the fullness of the Holy Ghost in them that Jesus had not yet paid the price in blood for their redemption on at the cross. So in many ways they were still in their flesh and they saw this event where Mary Magdalene anointed Jesus Christ and 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 they thought of her as being a woman who was unclean and that our Lord should not associate with such a woman. And we read then in verse 10 we read when Jesus understood it he said unto them why trouble ye the woman for she hath wrought a good work upon me for ye have the poor always with you but me ye have not always for in that she hath poured this ointment on my body she did it for my burial verily i say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there shall also be this that this woman hath done that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. So Jesus 
said that this was a, a, a precious thing that she did, that she anointed him for his burial. But then the story goes a little bit further. And in the next verse we read, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. So first of all, we can see part of what was happening with Judas, that he was a traitor, and he, he looked upon the outward appearance, and he sought to betray Jesus because of his association with this woman who was known to be a sinner. And part of the problem that people had with Mary Magdalene anointing Jesus Christ in this way was that the ointment was very expensive and it could have been sold to help the, the poor. And that's why Jesus said, you know, the poor will always be with you, but I won't always be with you. And he knew that he was going to be crucified soon. He knew that this was going to happen. And so when Mary anointed him in this way, he respected her for that, for her love and adoration for him, not based on who she was in this world, but based on her heart. And one thing we can see about the man of perdition is the man of perdition is all about money, that it's about uh, feeling self-righteous about how money should be dispensed in the world, but also feeling righteously indignant about sin. So these are two characteristics. One is the desire to uh, judge other people and their, their service to God, and also to be uh, somewhat stingy regarding money. So this was something that happened in his heart. And then he went to betray Jesus for money. So we can see the motive in the Antichrist will be, first of all, envy of those who whose love and serve the Lord. And a, a significant part of envy, it, it's not jealousy. Jealousy and envy are different. Jealousy is when you want to keep for yourself and protect for yourself something that is yours. So a loving husband is jealous for his wife. That's not envy. That is the love of God for his people is jealousy. He is a jealous God. All right. So God loves his people and wants to keep them for himself and protect them. Envy is wanting what someone else has. And not when one can't have what someone else has, then seeking to destroy it. So Judas did not have this kind of love for Jesus Christ. When he saw it in Mary, he was angered by this lowly, in his opinion, dirty woman was adoring the Lord. So he was envious and he wanted to destroy Jesus because of it. He wanted to destroy this example of service and humility and love that Mary Magdalene had exemplified. So rather than take the correction that Jesus Christ spoke in that moment was that this woman would be honored for this. Rather than to be corrected as the other disciples were, he then sought to betray Jesus. Now because the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, that the same language is used to describe Judas, we can know that there will be things about the Antichrist that are the same. So first of all, it will be false Christians. It will come from a system of false Christianity that when they see the love and devotion of God's people for Jesus Christ, 
they will be motivated by envy to attack God's people. So the Antichrist will come from a system that claims to be Christian and will turn on, it will betray the God's people who, who actually do love and serve the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that anything more about the Antichrist than this. I think there are many other factors that have been spoken of by many people that, that make a lot of sense, and, and I agree with. For example, it's likely that the Antichrist will be a Jewish man. But that doesn't mean that that Jewish man will not spring forth from a false Christian system. Because right now what we have under ecumenism is the Roman Catholic Church seeking to have dominion over all the world and gathering all the religions underneath her. And those of us who have watched the Jesuits operating, who have studied this, we know that they have a hand in every religious system in the world, including that of Judaism. So just because I'm saying that the Antichrist will spring from, spring forth from a, a false Christian system, that does not in any way take away from the likelihood and, and what I believe to be the scriptural basis that the Antichrist will in fact be a Jewish man. And of course this would be necessary because for the Jews to accept this false messiah, it would have to be a Jewish man. All right. So, and there's much more about that. I can send you a link if you have more questions about that. But here I'm talking about more of the characteristics of the Antichrist system that will bring forth this man of sin. So it will be a false Christianity, a superficial outward Christianity that cares about money and that is very harshly judgmental of redeemed sinners who are serving and loving Jesus Christ. It will be a system motivated by envy and will seek to destroy those who truly do love and serve Jesus Christ. So, therefore, we can understand many things about the Antichrist in terms of why right now what we're seeing unfold is is a rise of of something that seems to be de, uh, a dominionism of a uh, false Christianity. So a world power, political power, military power forming that is actually motivated by envy. Now one of the things that the system is moving to do right now is to silence God's people. Because one thing the system has always hated is that anyone can have a relationship with Jesus Christ by studying the Word of God and in prayer. And so what it's seeking to do is silence the voices of those who speak the truth of God's Word as known in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. There has been a war against God's Word ever since the time when the King James Version became available in English to God's people. Because the truth of this scripture, what it does, is it undermines this false Christianity. This system of power that, that, that imitates Christianity and tries to put itself between people having a relationship with Jesus Christ. So, what we're seeing forming now is a system of censorship where increasingly people are being taken off the internet who are speaking the truth of the Word of God. And for that reason, I urge you to jot down my email, to jot down in the description box below, there's a website for a man of God who teaches the truth of God's Word. And he is a very honorable, man who has diligently studied and preached the gospel for many years. And I highly recommend that people go over to that website 
and, and to write that down so that in the event that that the word of God no longer is available on YouTube, that people can find truth. All right. So what we see with the Antichrist is that that it will be a traitor and it will be motivated by envy and, and hatred for, for those who truly love the Lord. I hope this video is informative to you and I'm also seeking another way where people can watch my videos on a different forum uh, and if I have that available by the time this video is uploaded that link will also be in the description box below. The time is short. If we want to to resist evil we don't have to study evil. All we have to do is know the truth. And when someone comes along with a counterfeit gospel, we will not be deceived. We will not fall away because we have received the love of the truth and we will recognize a lie because we're familiar with what the truth is in God's word. All right. So my prayers are with you all. Please feel free to email me or to comment in the comment section below. Thank <laughs> you.